What's up guys? I wanted to go over some simple things that might help you decide on a generator when you're bought, when you're um, right. looking for one. First of all, I hear everyone, oh, I wanna get the, the standby whole house Generac generator. Okay. First of all, Generac is just a company. They spend a lot of money on advertising. That's why you see them around. They do have the largest share for residential houses. Would you see them in a hospital? No, they're not reliable enough. Um, so you can have a standby generator and it not be Generac all day, every day. They have Kohler, Cummins, Briggs and Stratton, tons and tons of generator uh, manufacturers do the standby units, okay? So that's that. Secondly, if you have the money, if you have the money, do not get an air-cooled 22KW. You want liquid-cooled. And the reason being is it's a more efficient way of keeping your engine cool. Think about it. We're in Florida, right? You've got hot air already surrounding that generator and you're going to try and cool it with hot air by a fan sucking air through the generator while it's running and keeping the engine cool. They're not as reliable, bottom line. You want liquid cooled if you can afford it. The next most important thing, if you want your generator to last long, you want... 1800 rpm you don't want 3600 rpm which all the air cooleds are 90 percent of the time they're 3600 rpm what does that mean it's moving at twice the speed as an 1800 i mean anything that's moving faster you know compared to something moving slower is gonna be worn out quicker in a way think about it so if you can afford it, go liquid cooled, go 1800 RPM. You'll thank me later. Um, the noise will be ridiculously more quiet if you go with 1800 RPM. It's gonna last you a lot longer. And um, just keep that in mind. No matter what, you want 1800 RPM and you want liquid cooled. You don't see your cars ever running air-cooled, ever, right? So, keep that in mind. I'm not saying that going air-cooled is bad. There's plenty, 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 plenty air-cooled generators lasting many years. Um, it's just my experience as a generator technician, having worked on all of them for many years, Liquid cooled and 1800 RPM is always going to be more beneficial, um, reliability wise, um, and, and, you know, lasting durability, reliability, more quiet. So keep that in mind. A lot of homeowners, I think can afford it and they don't, they don't know they're not educated on this stuff and that's why I'm here I'm gonna educate you and I'm gonna tell you what you need to know so that you're not getting ripped off and you're not getting something that you might think is the best option for you and it's not okay because all of the generator companies out there they don't care about that they want to tell you what you want to hear what you're what they're gonna tell you what they know you want to hear and once they get that money good luck getting a hold of them, you know, unless it's warranty work and whatnot. So another thing, if you can afford to, if you have the space, if you're on a lot of land, don't get that propane tank dug into the ground, have it hidden somewhere around the side of the building, having it in the ground. First of all, it's going to rust. Look into it after seven, 10 years, you might have to replace the propane tank because it's underground 
you know, who knows what, but it rusts quicker. Get it above ground. That way, if you were to ever have to replace it, you don't have to dig up the whole thing, which costs a lot of money. You don't have to have the machines come and dig it all up. It's right there. You're good to go. Now, obviously, if you don't have the space, you can't do it. And and that's that. There's nothing to do, nothing you can do about it. Don't let that hinder your decision on getting one. But look into it. I've read tons of customers that 10 years down the road, they've got to replace the tank. And it sucks when you don't have a, jet, a hurricane for 10 years and you got to replace the tank because now you're just dumping money into something that you haven't really used. Okay. Um, natural gas is the way to go. Uh, obviously, I don't have it hooked up at my place it's not everywhere if you have natural gas and you want your generator to be able to run for many many days straight invest in the liquid cooled 1800 rpm the one thing that is not good for an air cooled 3600 rpm even if it's on natural gas or liquid propane is running many days straight it's just it's running too fast for too long. Your liquid cooled is going to last way longer if you're losing power a lot and you need to use your generator a lot. You want 1800 and liquid cooled. Another thing, don't skimp out on the maintenance. I understand, I understand that you're not using the generator much, and that, you know, oh, it's like, I gotta spend five, seven hundred bucks a year, I'm telling a scary story, yeah, you're like, I gotta spend this much money a year, and I don't even use the thing, I get it, I, I totally get it, but you don't want to be one of these customers, let, let me tell you a little story, husband and wife, they're uh, retired, after Hurricane Wilma, I think it was, they spent 15 grand, got a standby Generac with the propane tank in the ground. A couple years passed, they're spending money on more on uh, maintenance. It's like, why are we spending this money? You know, we're not even using it. Husband decides to not maintain the generator. Let's it sit for like six years after that. They call me out there because it's not turning on now. I show up, the enclosure is completely rusted. It's about to fall apart. Thankfully, they're making the enclosures out of aluminum now so that you won't have that issue. But enclosure's falling apart. I lift up the enclosure. It's one of those square Generacs, the older ones, not the oval shaped 22 KWs. It's the square one. I lift the top cover off and like the hinges were just, it, it fell apart basically. I'm looking around. First of all, the battery's like 10 years old, obviously he didn't replace it. So I put a new battery in and I'm trying to, you know, I'm like, all right, let's see if it works. I go to start it. The thing's locked up because it hasn't been maintained. They, you know how they tell you for exercising, they want it to exercise once a week, once a month, whatever. That's very important. When you let something sit for that long, the condensation and the humidity creates moisture inside the engine. Not good. That creates rust, especially if you're not using it. So what exercising does is it gets it hot and it burns off that moisture that might be in the oil that might be forming on the sides of the cylinder walls and it keeps it from completely rusting over they didn't do that i couldn't turn the engine over even manually with my with an extended breaker bar trying to really i couldn't it was completely locked up and i told the wife well i told the husband that i said dude you need a new generator and uh, let's just say he uh, was not a happy camper because his wife was gonna whoop his butt. 
he went inside and probably went into his timeout corner. And he's probably still in timeout five months later now. <laughs> All right? So happy wife, happy life. His wife is not happy. His life is not happy. I promise you. The wife was extremely upset. She, you know, oh, I kept asking my husband to do this and make sure it was good. He never did it. Pay for the maintenance. Okay? Even if you don't use it, you have to realize if you're going to get a generator, this is something that you have to factor into your cost is maintenance. I recommend twice a year, once before hurricane season, once right after hurricane season. Make sure it's good, okay? Um, battery. If it's been three years, get a new battery. You know how many people I had during the one scare, the hurricane scare, where, where we actually almost got hit, but people lost power, and some people's generators didn't work? Well, their battery was dead. You know? Um, make sure that you're keeping track of that. Batteries are like one of the major things that will cause your generator to not turn on when you need it to. Okay. Um, another thing. You um, I think I forget what I was going to say, but that's about it. Just keep those in mind when you're looking for a new generator. Don't undersize it either. I have so many customers that have a big, big house. You've got money. And they get a 22KW, which is really good for one AC plus the water heater plus you know, everything else. Now, they wanna power three ACs and they get load shed uh, boards installed and all of this, you're maxing your generator out. Do you want your generator, it's like this, it's, it's equivalent to you going on a 10 mile hike. Say you're doing a marathon and one person, there's a person, it's you versus another person. The one person has nothing with them. They're very, they have no extra weight on them. They have just them with their shirt, pants, a bottle of water, and they're good to go. And then it's you who has a huge, huge backpack, a huge five gallon jug of water, um, your cell phone, extra clothes, you know, a walkie-talkie, a sleeping bag, all of this. And you're walking and you're the first part is hiking up a mountain that's like huge. Who's going to uh be better off? Who's going to struggle the the least amount? The person that has less stuff with them, right? You are maxed out and you're going to be trying your hardest the whole time. That's what happens when you're when you uh, get an undersized generator. You're making it work extremely hard at all times, and that's not good. And it's not going to make it last as long as if the generator is only working at fifty percent the whole time. And so, customers don't want to spend extra money, but you're going to spend extra money down the road when things break from it being overloaded or being running at full capacity at all times. Just because it's rated that it can handle it doesn't mean it's good for it. And it might be rated that it can handle it, but it's not rated for continuous power. There's ratings, right? There's standby power. There's 
continuous power, which hospitals and stuff have that rating. Standby power doesn't mean you can run it 24-7, 365 days a year. No. You got to add oil. You got to check your oil level. There's a lot of things. But anyways, that's why I'm here. Give me a call. Text me if you want any questions. I will point you in the best direction possible. I will not lie to you. I will not, you know, it's free. I give free advice. You can trust me. Read my reviews. The other companies might not like what I'm doing, but I don't care. Okay? Anyways, have a good day. Um, shoot me a like if you like this video. Post any questions in the comments, and I will talk to you later.